Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today I will try to show you a way of experiencing more time in tennis. Uh, when players don't experience a lot of time in tennis, they feel rushed and uh, what happens is that their strokes become very jerky because when the ball is coming to them, they see the ball just a few times. So it will look something like this. So if, if I play mini tennis, the player is going to have this kind of jerky movements when they play mini tennis because they're going to see and they will fail to control the ball. So they're moving something like this in a very jerky way and they're hitting in a very jerky way. And to understand why that happens, we have to try and get a bit into the beginner's mind because this problem is a common with beginners and also intermediate players, I would say all the way up to 4.0 level, the, the American system, the NTRP. So the player is not processing the ball well. So even though you've heard the advice of watching the ball, I will try to explain it today in a bit different way. So let me try and give you an example of the difference between how a skilled player sees the ball and non-skilled player sees the ball. So I will just run this video a, a couple of times. So on the left side is just a normal video and you might think then that's how we see the ball because you see the ball continuously in this video or when you're watching it. But if you focus now on the right side, on the right half, you will see just a few times the ball and this is typically how a beginner will see the ball. So in just uh, certain moments of the ball flight. So I'm talking about clearly seeing the ball. So getting the ball into focus. They might see the ball all the time, but blurry. So when they get focus on the ball, they are going to get it just a few times. So if I go a bit slower, the first thing I want to mention is that a beginner or lower level intermediate player does not see the contact. So this is how a skilled player is watching the ball. So they're watching very attentively the contact and a beginner does not pay attention to this area. And that's one of the main reasons why they're late. So on the left side is how a skilled player is watching the ball. They can see contact. And why is contact so important? Because from contact, we can quickly uh, determine the direction of the ball and we can react to it. So again, the beginner player sees nothing at contact and then suddenly, so if I go a bit slower, they're going to see the ball here the first time. So they will just see, oops, now the ball is in the air and they will start processing it. So I put one here, that's the first time they see the ball. And then for them, the ball travels very fast and they see some blur and now they will see the second time they will see the ball here as it's going down. So the ball flight of the ball, the ball is coming down. So they saw it first time, second time. And then they don't see the bounce. So here in the area of the bounce, they are not really paying attention. And a skilled player should, is also not looking into the bounce in order to see the ball extremely clearly because the ball changes direction very fast so it goes from here to here and you can lose the ball uh, from the focus if you watch the bounce too long so the way i describe it is that we watch the bounce with a soft focus and then we are waiting so a skilled player is waiting to see the ball come out of the bounce and then they try to track it so if you Look to the right side again, so beginner will not see the bounce and they will just see the ball appear. So this is the third time they will see the ball, uh, the ball appear in space and that will be their trigger to swing and they will swing. So those are the basically three times they see the ball relatively clearly. But if I go back a bit, so a skilled player from now on, they will see the ball already. So the bounce is a bit blurry and this is probably the first time, let me put it like this. So this is the first time a skilled player sees the ball and then a few, a few frames later, okay, I see the ball, okay, I see the ball, okay, I see the ball. So this could be three or four or five times that the skilled player is aware 
of their perception of the ball. But a beginner player is not aware, they will see the ball just one time, then likely their mind goes in the future, they are thinking where they're going to hit, they're looking where they're going to hit and so on, so they, they stop looking at the ball and that's why they just see the ball one time. So this is the main difference between how a skilled player perceives the ball and a beginner player perceives the ball or intermediate. So a skilled player, a tennis coach, finds it very difficult to understand how a non-skilled player sees the ball. So I personally would see the ball, let's say, from the bounce to me at least five times. So I'm, kind, I'm aware, let's say, after I hit the ball and if I go back in my mind and I try to remember in how many positions I saw the ball from the bounce. So let's say I play like this mini tennis. I would say at least three, four, five times, like da ta 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 So my shutter is doing ta 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 And because my shutter, my mind is doing ta 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 I am able to move my racket ta 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 As I am going forward, I am moving my racket through space in a very continuous manner because I don't feel rushed because from the bounce to me, I experience five units of time or sometimes more, sometimes less, but I experience multiple units of time. I see the ball, I see the ball, I see the ball, I see the ball, I see the ball. So the more times you see the ball, the faster your shutter works, the more time you will experience, even though if we measure time, it's the same. So this might be half a second of time from the bounce to me. But a beginner player is going to experience one unit of time, whereas a skilled player is going to experience five units of time just from the bounce. So this can already gives you a suggestion, how can we solve this problem? The way we solve this problem is that we ask the player to count very fast. So when they play, when they play, we ask them to count from the bounce. They count one, two, three, four, one, two, this one was a bit too deep, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and so on. So we ask the player to count very fast in their own language because that's the fastest way to count. And they're going to have to speed up their mind. This counting, one, two, three, four, five, is going to speed up their mind to process time faster and then they will realize that they can see the ball more times and then they will experience more time and they will calm down. So what you will see if you're coaching them, you will see that the player finally calms down and they're executing the strokes slowly and that way they can control the ball. So one way, so there are two ways of doing this exercise. One is to count from the bounce and you try to get as far as you can, so typically on mini tennis you get to three or four or maybe five. And the other way is to count from the moment your coach or your partner hits the ball and you try to count. So we go like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and so on. So I get to around 10 because we have the same rhythm all the time, so it was always 10. But uh, that's another way to make sure that the player is alert and tracking the ball. Uh, very common again with beginners and intermediate players is that they're not tracking the ball on the other side before the bounce. That flight means nothing to them. They don't know what to do with that flight. They are not used to calculating or judging the ball. So they kind of ignore the first ball flight. They're just waiting for the bounce to see the ball. And when they see the ball, that's the trigger to start the stroke. And obviously they will be too late and always rushed. So in that way, we also train the player to be a very alert to the ball coming from the other side so that their brain starts to calculating and predicting where the ball is going to end up. And that will also give them another extra sense of time. So here's another way I can try to explain. So picture one unit of time. Let's say this is one second of time. And 
what happens in a beginner's mind is that their mind has a low frequency so it's going like this like a slow CPU they have a low frequency so they have like just one two and maybe three perceptions of time units so this is one second from here to here if I give you like this that you see better so from here to here is one second and they have a low frequency so what we are trying to do when we make them count fast is we're trying to make we're trying to increase the frequency so they will perceive more units of time in the same time unit so it's one second so high level prayers have a very fast frequency of the brain and that's why they perceive the ball slow in the same time so imagine professionals returning serves and they are not panicking why because they perceive still quite a lot of time and a intermediate or beginner player does not perceive time and yet there is the same amount of time can be like one second or less so i'm just showing you that you understand what are we trying to achieve with counting and that's why the counting must be fast because we are trying to make the brain do something faster we're trying to increase the frequency of the mind and when you increase the frequency you will perceive more units of time and you will feel there is more time